For all his sons and his daughters Won't feel the sins with the faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put that work in Hamashiach gives that order Prepare slaughter for all his sons and his daughters, won't feel the sins with his faces. Iniquities to they fall. Bloodthirsty is of all nations. Not for living wrong. Wait to put this work in. How much y'all give us that? Yes! Okay, wait, let me ask. Go ahead. You said, you said you're against it, right? Why are you against it? You said because it's messed up? So so if it's messed up, right, um, what do you think should be done for the things that have uh, for the things that are messed up? What do you think should be done for that? Um, so you're telling me that if I rape, rob, murder, kill your family, the way that we rectify and make it better is to allow the victims to be able to say what they want to say. And that's supposed to fix it. That you'd be okay with me rape, rob, murdering, and killing your family, your mother, your father, your sister, your aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa. I can kill them, just abuse them. And then the way that you're gonna feel better about it is hey, you get to say whatever you want to me, and we're good. You'll be okay with that? How, how would you resolve the situation? What do you feel like would be a solution to the problem or a way to rectify it? What would be a remedy in your eyes. you telling me right now, if I walked up to you and reach my hand in your pocket to take your money, what are you going to do? Are you going to try to stop me? I'm trying to get to the point to say, when I ask you a question of what should be done, what's the solution? You say, I don't have a solution. And I'm saying, I believe that you do. I don't believe, uh, uh, listen, I agree with you that maybe the solution that you have in your head might not be what is what you feel like should be done because then you'd be on the wrong end of it, right? But you know what you would do if someone came in and misused and abused you and your family. Would you just let someone do that? That's the point of me asking you, would you just let me come and walk up to you, reach my hand in your pocket and take something from you? You're, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't try to... That's my like like No, no, no. I totally understand. You have my word. I'll give you my side of it. I'll give you my word of that. But you're not going to hijack my question and put it back on me? Come on. I know, I'm sure you probably do that to your girlfriend or, or, or your boyfriend. You never know nowadays. And it doesn't work on me. I'm trying to get somewhere and then you'll hear my side of it. What do you feel like is a solution? If someone can't rape, rob, murder you, the fact, the fact that we even have to speak English right now is as a result of what your people, the fact that our Latino brothers have to speak Spanish is as a result of what your people did. So what do you feel like is a good solution? What do you feel like should be done? How do we get better? How do we get on the same page? Because right now, things are lopsided. You're winning. You're in a place reaping all the benefits, taking advantage of all the opportunity that was created on the fact, the blood, the sweat, the abuse of my people, black and Hispanics. How do we get even? I understand it's a good question. I know it's a good question. That's why I asked you. You have nothing. Hold on, wait, wait. Hold on. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Y'all relax. He's good. What's your name? What's your name? Anthony. You tell Hold on. Screw up. You're telling me you have nothing? You don't have, If it happened to you, what would you do? You have to be there? Hold on, let me, let me show you something real quick. You believe in God, Anthony? Slide back over. You don't believe in God? Do you believe in justice? Okay, how do you establish your means and your, your, your measure stick of justice? Don't you know the word don't you know the word just means balance? You can't engage in a conversation? Alright, let me show you my let me tell you my solution before you go. Come here. I'm gonna tell you my solution. Alright, bring it out. The book of numbers, chapter 35, verse 33. So ye shall not pollute their land where ye are. So the Bible that we believe in, right? So listen, I know you say you don't believe in God. I know you say you don't believe in the Bible. But I want to ask you, as we tell you the solution, I want you to let me know if you agree with the solution. That's fair? All right. So it says, it says right here, you shall not pollute the land, right? Do you feel like people should go around polluting land? No, right? Go ahead. For blood. 
Yes. It's a fireless story. Yeah, don't, don't put the camera on her, right? I just want to talk to Anthony real quick. It says, don't pollute the land. You agree. For what? Megan. For blood. It's a fireless story. It says blood is what defiles the land. Do you agree that blood can defile the land? Right? So, just off that alone. Don't defile the land. And blood is the one that defiled it. Do you believe or can you agree that the United States is polluted by the blood of the indigenous people and the blood of the people that are carried over here on cargo ships, right? So this land is polluted. Again, you understood by your ancestors, correct? So you agree. We shouldn't have done it. People should not pollute the land, but the fact of the matter is it is polluted. So let's see what should happen. Go ahead. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein. So we're trying to get to a solution, right? How do we cleanse a land that is now defiled and polluted by blood? It cannot be cleansed except by what? But by the blood of him that shed it. Is that something that if your, if this land was polluted by your people's blood, would you feel or would you agree with the solution that the only way we can cleanse the land of it being polluted by your family's blood is to shed the man's blood that shed your blood? Why not? So if somebody killed your mother, what would you want done? You keep saying you don't know, but you can't sit up here and tell me that because if you were brought up and put on a witness stand and you were to sit up here and the police were trying to give him life in prison, would that be okay with you? If he just killed your mother, that would that be okay? <laughs> Huh? You say you space out? You want to know why you space out? Because the thought of somebody taking your family member's life, it takes you to a place that is not good. It takes you, it takes you out of your body because some, something like that is unfathomable. But this is something that we experience every day by your people. So, so it, imagine how it comes off of our feels that when we ask you a question of what do you think should happen, you sit there saying, I don't know. No. But in all honesty, Anthony, you do know. Right. You do know. You know why? Because you know what you do if you were in my position, right? What, what's your name, if you don't mind me asking? My Michael. Huh? Michael. So, real quick, stay there, Anthony. Michael, I asked Anthony a question. I said, how do you feel about the Ray Robert murder and the abuse of black, Hispanic, and Native Indians at the hands of whites? How do you feel about it, Michael? Bad, right? Anthony said the same exact thing. So what I asked Anthony was, I said, what do you think should be done for it? How do we rectify this so as a human race, especially between blacks and whites, what should we do so we can move forward into a future in harmony? What do we do? You said love? So you're telling me that if I went, killed your wife, killed your kids, your mother, father, grandfather, kids, everything, your sister, brother, the only thing you'd want me to do to rectify this is love. Don't you move, Anthony. I see you keep trying to skip away. Don't you move. Because we want to, I want to point out something. Do you guys know each other? But both of you clearly are Caucasian, correct? See what I'm saying? So how do we both have, how do, I want to see if both of you guys have the same, he's fine. Slide over real quick. Let him come up. I want to see if both of you guys give us the same answer. You said love, right? He said the ability of free speech, be able to say what you want. Is that a rectifiable response? Or, or is that a rectification for somebody's life taken that we move forward? Love. Right. So you're saying the way that you're solving the problem is to go marry the people that you Ray Rob murdered and took over. Don't you don't you know that that was already happening? It's called the spoils of war. It's called the spoils of war. I didn't say that. I'm not saying that that Anthony, don't you move. Don't you move, Anthony. I'm not saying that that was your motive. I'm saying whatever your reasoning was, you ended up doing the same exact thing that your ancestors did. You come in, you you pillage the land, and then you take the women. What do you mean you didn't? What's your ethnic background, if you don't mind me asking? Irish. See what I'm saying? So, how are you... Are you telling me that the Irish didn't, didn't have any involvement in the transatlantic slave trade? If you want me to, I can pull up the article right now to let you know. They had a lot of slaves. Oh. You said what? So when... And did what? And did what with them? 
Exactly. But we know what the Irish did. We know what the Spanish did. Now you bring, but hold on, Michael. When you bring that up to me, are you are you are you are you hold on? Are you doing that to tell me that I shouldn't even really? It shouldn't even really matter because everybody did it. So why are we even talking about it? So tell me, give me the context. Give me the reason why you bring it up. Why do you bring up Africans? Why do you bring up African Americans that bought slaves? Right. So you're saying that we shouldn't really focus on one people. Everybody did it, so we should just move forward from here. Michael, hear me. Let's have a conversation. Why do you bring it up to me? No, 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 no. Why do you bring it up to me? When I bring up what your Irish ancestry did and, and, and Anthony's Spanish uh, ancestry did, when I bring that up, you say, well, Africans did it too. Do you have kids? You say, you have, you have kids, right? So if your kids got caught stealing at the store and they come back home and say, what are you doing? They say, well, dad, everybody was doing it. How would you, what would your response be to your kid? Come on, Andy. Come on, Michael. Now you're just not being honest right now. I, I didn't say that they ever did. I'm saying as a parent, you have to be prepared as a parent that when your kids do wrong and they did it by way of being influenced by a crowd of their peers, you have to have a response to that. So I'm asking as a parent, what would you say to them? If their response to you, son, how are you out here stealing? And they say, well, dad, everybody was doing it. If everybody had driven up the bridge, what would you do? So what would your response be to your kids? Do they? Do your kids get a pass now because everybody was doing it? The same way you don't get a pass as an Irishman. The same way Anthony don't get a pass. That's right. So if you don't want a pass, then what is the repercussion? What's the repercussion? Are you a God fear man, Michael? You have a biblical name. You said sometimes. What is your foundation? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the Bible? So I'm not asking you if you follow it. I said, do you believe in it? Do you do you believe in it? Do you subscribe to it as a, a word of God? I struggle with what? Understanding? With believing. What are some things that you don't believe in? Where, where did the struggle come in? You don't like that he's a God of war? But, but, but the only reason me and you have a conversation right now is by war. So it seems like war privileges you. So why do you then, how has that been a struggle? No, what I'm saying is, Michael, war benefits you. So how has war been the interference between you believing in God because he's a God of war? War works for you. You wouldn't have no Puerto Rican wife right now if it wasn't for war. That's right. You wouldn't have no little biracial Puerto Rican kids if it wasn't for war. Oh, listen, 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 listen. What you can do is be honest first. If I came and hurt your kids, what would you do? You're lying. If you're telling me you don't know what you do, then then I don't know why that Puerto Rican woman is even with you. She can't even That's look right. at you. She can't even look at you. You're telling me, man, you're telling me right now, you're telling me right now that you trust this man. He doesn't know what will happen. He doesn't know what he would do if somebody came and hurt your kids. I would. Hey, get this way. Get this woman a hand. Hey, your wife just said it. She called you a liar right now. You know exactly what you would do. Right. How about this? We don't want to ask you anymore. What would Michael do? If somebody came in and hurt your kids, what would Michael do? You would what? You would what? Give Michael a hand. You see what happens with honesty, Michael? You see what happens with honesty, Michael? What you mean? Why, why wouldn't you like it about yourself, Michael? That's what you're supposed to do as a man. What are you talking about? Hey, listen. It is what it is. There's no way in hell you can walk. There's no way in hell you can walk by and just allow it to happen and nothing happens. Listen. What? If, listen. If, listen. 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 Hold on. No. You, no. 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 Hold, stop. 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 No, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got the microphone. Duh. You came up here to listen. Michael, you came up here to listen to me. So I am the one asking questions. Duh. But again, you've been you've been avoiding a lot of the questions, and it took your wife to hold you accountable to answer the question. That's right. So, when you ask me the question, you say, if, should, no, no, that's, that's fine. He's got it on me. He's got it on me. If you're telling me, so should there be more and more bloodshed, right? I'm saying, I'm saying, give me an alternative solution. 
Thank you. You see that? You see those two hands and those shoulders? If I don't have an alternative. I would do the same thing you do. I would do the same thing you do. Sure. So the point that I'm making is that if you do it, you can't be mad at anybody that wants to do it to you, Mike. So when you ask me, do you believe in God? And you pick, say, sometimes I struggle because he's a man of war. That means you know there's a possibility you can end up on the wrong side of that man of war. Right. Tell you, Michael, the day is coming where you're going to end up on the wrong side of that man of war. Right. Show you, and I'm going to show you. We got to get numbers. Come. So, we, uh, so, so, wait, 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 wait. You said you believe in it. You said you struggle. No, it is. You said you struggle. You said sometimes you believe. So let's see. I don't like God. Let's see. Let's see if one of those. Oh, so you, do you want me to show you the God of the New Testament? Is that better for you? Let's, you want me to show you Jesus? What? Revelation 13. Let's show you Jesus. Oh, 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 Listen, your wife, is having, your, your wife is having a good time. You said what? I don't want to hear Revelation. Why? That's Jesus. Revelation 1 and 1. Real quick. Go. The book of Revelation. Oh, Revelation is Jesus. Yes or no? No. Okay, let's show. Read out. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which God gave unto him. Which God gave unto him. Go ahead. To show unto his servants. To show unto his servants. So this is Jesus Christ showing his revelation from God unto his servants. You understand that? So when we get to the... 13th chapter, you can't say, no, 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 I don't like that. See, you, you get to pick and choose, and that's the point. You don't have no discipline, right? You don't have no discipline, not to tell the truth or to submit to God. It took your wife to keep you disciplined. That's right. That's true. So, do it better. Stop making your wife have to step up and be the man that you should be, Michael. That's right. Bring it out. The book of Revelation. See this. Chapter 13, verse 10. Go he that read into captivity. We already discussed the Irish lamp, blacks, and Hispanics, and the Captivity. We already know that. We've already established that as a fact. So Jesus Christ said, He that leadeth into captivity shall what? Shall go into captivity. Shall what? Shall go into captivity. Jesus Christ said, He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Right. So you see, you see how you end up on the wrong side of that man of war, which makes perfect sense. Why you out of all people say, I don't know if I believe in this guy because if I do, I have to accept my accept my reality. I have to accept my faith. But in all actuality, you're not an honest and just man. I already proved it to you because your wife had to kick you, had to come and save you. But if you were honest and just, do you understand that bloodshed has to happen to you and your people for the bloodshed to happen to me and mine? Right. Right. That is just. That is pure justice. Are you a man? okay? You're not a man of God, but are you a man of justice? So how do we establish justice, Michael? Right. Bring it on. Huh? Listen, listen. The word just means balance. So so where there is hurt, <laughs> hurt has to happen. Where there is bloodshed, blood has to be shed. That's why your wife said, that man that's standing in front of you knows exactly what he will do. Because that's what any man would do. Of course, listen, 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 listen. Including the man of war, which is the most high God. You said, where does it stop? Listen, it stops when the black, Hispanic, and Native Indians get their rightful position justice in the earth, which is above all people on the planet earth. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's why you went and got you with a Puerto Rican woman, because you knew she was better than that white woman that I was is the, is the Puerto Rican woman better than the Irish woman? Oh, I did. You, better, you, better, you said no? You said no? Your wife is not better than your mother? Oh, see? Oh, fumble in the home. I, I, no, 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 Michael. I never said do you. I never said don't love your mother. I said is Puerto Rican women better than Irish women? And you said no. So why aren't you with an Irish woman then? Go ahead. You, you're gonna you're gonna look at me in the face right now and tell me that Irish cooking is better than Puerto Rican cooking. Oh! <laughs> I told you now. Oh, I know what this is. I know. Never mind. So long. <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, we know what's going on. Man to man. Can we what? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Possible? Yes. I'm gonna answer your question directly. Yes. Okay. Now. See what I'm saying? Come on, Michael. This is what you. What are you laughing about? Hey, listen. He let you do whatever he wants. Listen. Listen. You backing him up. Listen, when you asked me a question, you said, you said, 
Is it possible for man and man for us to have love for each other? Yeah. But what, on what basis am I going to love you? What? That sounds more erotic. Right. Right. That sounds more erotic. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not gonna just. I'm not gonna just love you because you're a man. Come on, that's that's crazy. Exactly. But through mutual respect. So how can I respect you, Michael, if you can't even give me an honest answer on how we rectify the issue between Irish and blacks? That's right. I see it. It's it, it's called principle. It's called character, Michael. It's called integrity. No, what? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that when I'm asking you these questions, I'm looking into the content of the character of a man that you are. So when I ask you this, so when I ask you this, what is a viable solution as to how to rectify the issues that are being perpetuated? Because as long as you ignore them, they'll never be resolved. You don't do that with your wife. When you guys have issues, don't you guys have to rectify, or do you sweep it under the rug? But you gotta fix it, right? So I'm telling you about the person. Do you love me, Michael? Yes, I do. Michael, I'm telling you, I have an issue with you, Michael. I have an issue with you. I have an issue with all your people, Michael. That's right. Hey, Michael. So, so, Michael, I'm telling you, I want to resolve this issue so we can move forward properly. Is that fair? I just showed you the solution according to the words of Jesus Christ. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. And, and finish it out, boy. He that killed with the sword. Literally, you guys had to kill us in order to take us into slavery. He that kills with the sword must what? Must be killed with the sword. Must be killed with the sword. That's my solution that I put on the table. Is it definitive? Of just yet? No, because we're having a conversation. So that's what I put on the table. What say you, Michael? Now I want to see about your, your character. You said you don't want to fight? Then don't. Listen, then don't. Then lay down and take your judgment like a man. That's right! You don't have to fight. If you don't want to, you can just bow out gracefully. Give me that example 49. I got it. 23? After this, we, listen, after this, I know you got to go. But again, Michael, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you ran out on your wife like you're trying to run out on me, she'd not let she would not love you, Michael. You want to know why? Because she'd understand that you don't love her. So if you say you love me, then you'd have to give me the same consideration. And you keep trying to you keep trying to run out on when I'm trying to establish a level of love between us. Alright. No, no, you say, wait, I gotta go, I gotta go. No, if if you really care about this, if you really just because you're not putting anything on the table, Michael, we gotta negotiate. Hey. You say you're talking about forgiveness? Forgiveness? Oh, wait, wait. Jesus, Jesus most definitely talked about forgiveness, for sure. But Jesus also said, he that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. So I'm telling you, so I'm telling you, first of all, I just read the words of Jesus Christ. Thank you. So you don't get to pick and choose which one works for you, Michael. Then why do you want to use it then? What? See, see that one? That's deception. That's deception. Michael, do you treat your wife this way that you love? You, you see, your husband is a deceptive person. Why is he this way? He tells me he doesn't believe in it, but then wants to use it because he know I believe in it, and he wants to try to use it against me, and you want to pick and choose and pervert it. I know I have the microphone, and don't think you're going to get it. Sir, I don't want you bet not. How? I believe in everything that's in this book. Right. No. For who? Wait, wait, no, he didn't say just the man that strikes you in the face. That was a, listen, that was an instruction given to the children of Israel so that they can bond together so the judgment of Revelation 13 and 9 and 10 can be fulfilled. Right. Bring it out. Bring it out. This is Jesus. Go ahead. Book of Luke, chapter 19. Oh, you, oh, you, said you, you said you believe in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's read Luke. Go ahead. Book of Luke. Chapter 19, verse 27. Yeah. For those mine enemies. For those mine what? My enemies. My enemies. For those mine enemies, the enemies of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which would not that I should reign over them. That would not have Christ reign over them. And you're struggling with that. So you fall into this. Read. Bring other. Bring to him. Bring here. Go ahead. And slay them before me. And slay them before him. So you see how you're perverting the words of Jesus Christ, you have to read it, you have to look it up. Show him his red. Show him his red. Show him his red. 
Ned Letters. He said he has to read it, right? Because he's struggling with this. But the point that I'm making, the point that I'm making is, Michael, if you are sincere and as honest as you're trying to tell us, then show it in your actions, not just in your words. And, and, and stop trying to uh, pervert and stop trying to trick and deceive people. You are, because like I said, you want to say, oh, try to turn the other cheek, but you're ignoring the actual words that we're reading. Can you tell me where, can you show me and tell me where in the Bible he said turn the other cheek? So stop trying to use it then. But even then, if I'm coming to you on a, on a, on a, on a straightforward, just what do you say? I'll put my solution on the table, you're supposed to put yours. What do you do? I know. Hold on, wait, wait. You're not, and you're definitely not going to come and hop in between me and her conversation. You got to wait your turn and be patient. Be patient. Be patient. The point I'm making is this. The Lord's not going to pick and choose who the hell the little people, the, 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 the chosen few that didn't set people in the safety. The point that I'm making is he wouldn't be here reaping the benefits and all of the different things that came at the hands of my rape, me and your rape, robbing murder. He wouldn't be a benefit if he wasn't an enemy. What is he doing to stop it? What is he doing to counter it? You got precept? Oh, bring your precept. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 8. Yeah. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of evil that I thought to do unto them. Hold on. If that nation, it didn't say if that individual. Right. See what I'm saying? So what we try to do is we try to pick individuals out to say, nah, man, not them. But it says they have to repent. Meaning what? They have to turn from the wrong that they've done. Have they turned from the wrong that they've done? No, we don't. Do you know any white man that he do you has to? to. We don't do you, have listen, to. at God's command. Yeah, hey, all praise to the most high God. Can so you call him God evil? Call it and that's your problem. Wow. Wow. You see that? It's all right. The Lord, the Lord, I think the Lord might just break that thing. Oh, <laughs> Go ahead. Ma'am, if you mind, you were going to say something? Can you? I didn't interrupt you. I was saying I was having a conversation. I didn't want you to interrupt me. It was no, no malice in my heart for that. Yeah. Because I, I have lived that my entire life. Okay. As you know, as you know, I Thank you. 
Can I ask you something? What do you feel like I'm not hearing from your husband that maybe you understand? Maybe you could explain it better to me than what he was doing. What do you feel like I'm not getting from what your husband is saying? Because you say, when you say he has these conversations, that means it's not the first time, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me speak. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. What I'm saying is, so, so what do you feel like I'm not understanding? What's your husband's position on the matter when he walks around with the right guilt? He wants to have these conversations. What do you feel like I'm not getting? you're saying you say I, I don't know your husband like you do so this is why i spoke to your husband's character and this is why when i look to you and you affirm you said he knows exactly what he would do so 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 if i don't know him only thing i can know about your husband is how he represents himself and how he presents himself when he engages in these conversations <laughs> Well, no, it's about it's about being honest, and that's really what we're looking for. And, and, and if he hold on, real quick, and if he is honest, then he has to then accept the reality of balance in the earth. Now, I know your husband says he struggles with God. What say you? Are you a God fearing woman? You believe in the Bible? So, and that's not that's not a problem. I ask that question to see what premise, what foundation can we build this conversation on, right? So, if you don't, then I ask you, do you believe in the concept of justice? So, I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked your husband. None of this stuff is trickery. If we believe in justice, right? What is your definition? What is your understanding of justice that you say you believe in? What's justice? I'm a, listen, listen, I'm going to tell you this. Everybody gives me, everybody that does not believe in God does the exact same thing you just did when I asked that question. Because it's hard to define it when you don't have a definitive ground to stand on to say it is justice. Yeah, the concept, the idea. Yeah, you don't want wrong done in the world. And you do understand that there has to be repercussions and consequences for wrong that is done. Yeah, but... Do you have a foundation to build it on to then say, okay, this is okay, this is not okay, X, Y, Z? No, you probably don't. So when I say what is justice, it becomes difficult. Do your best. What's justice to you? So you're saying justice is equality. Get us get us this here, right? Justice is equality. How and, and, and I'm gonna use these two demographic of people simply because that's where the issue lies for right now, and that's the people that's present. We have representatives on both sides. How do we establish equality for blacks? I mean for blacks for what white's done. How do we establish equality? How do we do that? And now, now watch this. Hold on. Let's 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 qualify the question. What people want to do is they want to start from December 9, 2023, moving forward. But me and you, it just brought you to tears. And it has brought me to tears many times. Because me and you start behind the line. Michael, you gotta be patient. You had your time, you wanted to walk off. Just be patient. Okay, I thought you were raising your hand to speak. Okay. Because me and you recognize we start behind the line. So we can't just say moving forward, we just love. We can't say moving forward, we just be equal. We can't say moving forward, we just treat people the same way. 
because me and you are far behind the line. And that. even the path to get to the line, where Michael is and has been and his family has been, we have so many obstacles. Because it's something that you brought up about your brothers. When they say you walk, when they walk with you, they say at least you could pass. You know what that is? That's an identification of self-hatred. As, as a self-doubt and feeling less than. So so although if we if, 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 if the world just started right now and started treating everybody the same exact way, that's not going to repair the trauma that me and you have. So how do we fix that? And I'm a t now, now let me sh let me share something with you. I know it's hard. I know it's what they call it a tough pill to swallow. We totally understand that. But one thing that we get, and one thing that I cannot identify when I come up here and I speak to people, the longer me and you sit up and say I don't know, the longer the problem will continue. When are we going to sit down and stop this I don't know stuff and get down to the brass tacks of it and come to a solution? All right. You don't know. Michael doesn't know. Damn near everybody walking on South Beach doesn't know. And guess what? They don't care. Give me the book of uh, 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 what is that? Uh, uh, Jeremiah one and, uh, no, Isaiah one and three. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you something about black and, uh, black and Hispanic people. We don't know and we don't care. We don't even consider. We don't even think about it. it. We're, so, we're so focused on trying to have a good time instead of doing what is necessary to set ourselves up properly for the future. And again, this is why I bring up you guys as parents. I know you teach your kids this stuff. Right? In high school, in college, when they get out of college, handle your business early so you can live uh, fun and have all of that good time later. But your, the principle of the matter is handling your business. And the business that black Hispanic people have to handle, first and foremost, is a love for ourselves. We got to get out of this self doubt and this self hatred. Love for ourselves. Then, hold on, hold on. And then when we love ourselves, we have the ability to love others, right? Then we can love one another. And once we build that, you know what's going to happen? We now got to look at the rest of the world and, and, and recognize and witness how they love us right. or the lack thereof. And if we can recognize the lack of love that the world has for us, how do we go and establish that love? We have to get down to a solution because people like me and you start behind the line. And in order to move forward harmoniously, we got to figure out a solution. If we can keep saying, I don't know, and, and I don't care, we keep finding distractions so we don't have to talk about it, we're going to stay in the same place that we've been in for a very, very long time. Bring it out. I say one and three. Go ahead. Chapter one, verse three. The ox knows his owner. The ox, right? An animal knows his owner. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. An ass is a donkey. Considered to a lot of people as a, a representative of a dumb animal. So something as uh, considered dumb knows his master and knows his owner, but that but Israel, but Israel, Israel is a nation of people that you are a part of. You've never heard that before, right? Have you ever heard that the so-called Puerto Ricans are the Israelites you read about in the Bible? Hey, get a get a sister a hand. Get a sister a hand. Now, 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 watch this. I wouldn't necessarily say that Puerto Ricans are Jews, but I definitely say that you guys are a part of the nation of Israel, right? I see us. So, all of the 12 tribes are Israelites, but all of the 12 tribes are not Jews. So, we say the Puerto Ricans are from the tribe of Ephraim, right? But it says, my people do not consider. Now, it's a fortunate thing that you've heard that before, but how many Puerto Ricans have never heard that before, right? Hold that. Psalms 83. Get it quick, right? Because it's a reason why our people don't know. And this is another part. This is another uh, point on the table that we have to discuss in terms of how to rectify the situation, how to how to fix the problem and come to a solution. It's self-doubt. It's self-hatred. We don't have an identity. You know what? What does Puerto Rican mean? Right. Exactly. So port of the word Puerto Rican means port of riches. Who gave the Puerto Ricans that name? It was the people that came and conquered them. They looked at that land, they saw how fruitful, how rich it was, and they said, oh, this is the Puerto Riches. And now we're going to call the indigenous people there the Puerto Ricans. And now we walk around so proud, calling, us, calling, them, calling themselves Puerto Rican like it's a badge of honor when they don't understand that's a slave term and a slave name. Right. Psalm 83 from the top. Go ahead. It's the book of Psalm 83 and verse 1. And it reads, a song. Oh, Real quick. If all the Caucasians could come forward, we could actually really use you guys' help. We could really use you guys' help. All honesty, right? Come forward, right? Read out. No, no, no. Like I said, like I said.
said, we're going to keep it cordial because I just want to, I just want some answers, right? Bring it up, call all court cases down, right? Bring it out. <laughs> it reads, a psalm or a psalm of Asaph. Uh -huh. uh, bring it out. It says, keep not thy, thou silence, O God. So this is a prayer that the Israelites would call up to God to say, don't keep silent with us, right? Continue to move through us, continue to walk with us, continue to speak unto us and give us your word, right? Go ahead. Hold not thy peace. And be not still. And continue to move. Don't be still. Continue to work with us, God. Read. Oh, God. Go ahead. For the thine enemies make a tumult. So we read earlier, I heard you, I know you were listening, where it says the Israelites were going to go into slavery on ships and they were going to be sold unto their enemies. So that sets the precedent and the understanding of who the enemies is in the context of the Bible because it's, a, it's relative to the Israelites and the experiences that they were having with other nations. The people we was going to be taken into slavery with on ships sold to all our enemies. Now let's see if it fits. The same people we were sold to, let's see if they fit this description. Our enemies make a tumult. They're in an uproar. They are having an issue with the children of Israel, who we say are black, Hispanic, and native Indians. Read. Oh. And they that hate thee have lifted up their heads. It says our enemies are in an uproar, make a tumult, and the people that hate us, they've lifted up their heads. They become proud over us. That's why they can call it as the island of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, right? Because they're now proud over it. They've conquered it. They've conquered the people. They've subjected them. They stole everything. They broke these people down to nothing. And now they're proud over them. They're honored for over them, right? Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And they've taken counsel to deal crafty with the people of Israel, right? They take crafty counsel against them. They don't take crafty counsel to help them out. They don't take crafty counsel to benefit them. They take crafty counsel to harm them against them. Read. And consulted against our hidden ones. And then they, it says they consult against our hidden ones. Who was our hidden ones? This is the reason why I was able to talk to Michael the way that he did, the way that um, I did as a man, because the people that we're supposed to hide, that weren't hide or hidden in the Hebrew, is the ones that we protect. So they consult against our people, and then they they, they consult and they come up with a plan, a crafty counsel against the people that we're supposed to protect, which is what? Our women and our children. They're receiving our kids in these in these school systems, giving them misinformation, teaching them that they're American more than actually who they are. They're not restoring anything back to them that they want to have to, that was taken from them. None of that stuff. They're indoctrinating them to just live in this place and try to just move forward and forget about the past. Then they teach our women. Good thing that you have not uh, necessarily fallen into it, but the fact of the matter. I say this with all due respect. The way that they have consulted against you being a woman is giving you this idea that marrying a white man is the best decision that you could have made in your life to build your, to build your family with. What advantage, what type of benefit, what type of relevance would it have if we want to find a solution and rectification for the wrong that's done for us to go and build a life with the man on the side that did wrong to us? Now, I understand the dilemma that you said you grew up in. White mother, black Latin father. There's the confusion that's there. And it internalized racism, right? Where you feel like you gotta hate yourself. Now let me show you something. This is the whole point of what we're gonna read and what they did to us, why it then perverts our judgment and our discernment in the world today. Because biblically speaking, I know you don't believe it, but I'm saying this is our history. Biblically speaking, we determined who we are by the man's seed. The same way we determine fruit by the seed. Have you ever heard the term fruit of the womb? Right? So understanding that that's an agricultural term. You take a seed, you plant it anywhere in the world, what's gonna spring up? Whatever the seed was. So although your European mother represented the soil that you were developed in, the seed that sprung up from that was what your father was, which was a so-called Puerto Rican man from the tribe of Ephraim. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Michael says no. Michael says no, watch this, watch this. She mentioned something earlier. She says, I have my father's black Latin blood, I mean, Latino blood in me. She says, and I have my mother's blood. How do you have your mother's blood in you? Where does a child get his blood from? The child get his blood, how? Explain it, give me the science on it. Don't just say it, Michael. The sperm and the egg come together. The woman and the man equally come together. How does your body, how does your body produce blood, Michael? Right. 
exactly. through the bones. And your bones and your skeletal structure, and, and your bones and your skeletal structure is developed by what? The sperm or the egg? What creates your spinal cord? What creates your spine? What good is the sperm without an egg? I never, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. What good is the seed without the soil? It, it, Michael, what you're trying to do is you're trying to superimpose some idea that I'm trying to teach your wife that the woman doesn't matter. I never said that. I'm talking about how you determine what side of the line you fall on, although you might come from two uh, uh, people that fall on different sides of the line. How does the how's the food, how does the offspring determine what side they fall on? Your wife is sitting there telling us that she suffered an internal racism and a dilemma her whole life. Which, wait, wait, listen, what is it? Which, listen, which turns out to be a self-hatred thing which she really never had to if she understood right. she's actually a product of the father's seed and you just said it the blood is developed from your bones the, the egg does not give the child bones it's the seed that does and you're not going to sit up here and someone who doesn't know anything about it and tell me that it comes from the egg yes the egg was useful yes the egg was used yes it's beneficial but where you get your bones from which is where you develop your blood from is from the sperm right. so, hey, so, so, so hold on we'll, 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 we'll get to that in a second but i just want to make one thing one one thing clear no 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 sir an, an individual means unable to be divided sir and she's an individual so we can't turn her in the half. Hold on, sir, sir, Michael, 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 the first thing you gotta do, the first thing you gotta, you, listen, we didn't tell her to hate it. We didn't tell her to hate anything. We, we didn't tell, we didn't, we didn't tell anybody to hate anybody. That's a lie. That's a lie. Listen, listen, listen. Well, that, that's a personal, that's a personal problem. But very simply, a butterfly isn't half cocoon. Never be half cocoon. Just because the cocoon was necessary for the metamorphosis to take place from caterpillar to butterfly will never make a butterfly half cocoon. That's the point. Go ahead. Michael, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because it doesn't fit your point. That's why it doesn't make sense to you. But it, hold on, but again. Michael, hold on, Michael, 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 Michael. Explain so so is an orange is an orange half soil? Yes or no? Is it half soil? If your child was outside eating a handful of dirt, would you say, it doesn't matter because if I took him in a house and gave him an apple, it's half dirt anyway, so it's cool. You see how that doesn't make any sense, Michael? Yeah. Your point's not making sense. Everything that we're lining up to you is literally the biological makeup and development and maturation of human beings. You don't have to like it, but it's the fact of the matter. You get your blood from the bones. You get your bones from the sperm. Not to say that nothing else was utilized, clearly. First of all, somebody can say, oh, Marvin Gaye was useful. It's a, it's a credit of my child, too, so we got to throw him in there. Right? He's 10% Marvin Gaye now. Because right? y'all was bumping that sexual healing when you conceived your kids. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on. Michael, hold on, hold on. You, you can't make seven and then try to move on. You said we're utilizing semantics. Yeah, yeah. I'm. You're saying my point's no good, but then you can use yours to prove your point. But when I say my point. I'm I hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, watch this. Michael. I'm stating facts. You may hold on, wait. I asked you, where from what? The egg or the spot? Then stop yeah. acting like one. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Michael, how the hell do you know what I am? That's right. Michael, how do you know what I am? Good point. Thank you. That's that's the I'm white and I'm right. So Michael, Michael, so sometimes you need to humble down, shut your mouth, and listen and learn something, Michael. Shut your mouth, come on, Hold on, hold on, hold on. We were, hold on. I want to, real quick, I want to show you, I want to show you guys something. I'm in the shade, though. No, no, no. I'm going to calm down. The point that I'm making is that when I'm explaining something and Michael steps up and says, no, 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 no. It's like, come on. Your wife's trying to hear it. And you don't even have a viable antithesis to come and tell us something of the opposite. That's the point. So when I get loud with Michael, don't worry about it. I'm going to, it's going to be me and you now. We're not dealing with Michael no more, right? Finish that in Psalms 83. Go ahead. This is Psalms 83 and verse uh, 5. For they have, like verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation so what the verse that we read beforehand like i said with all due respect 
I'm not saying this to try to, you know, crumble your whole entire world. I'm saying if we understood the value and the honor in ourselves, we would never, we would never, you would never allow me to come in and just kill Michael and all of your children and then somehow you fall in love with me. It just would not happen You're like that. Nation. You're a man. You, you talk about nations? Um, talk about Michael, Michael, I'm talking about a man right now because I'm but talking about talk because I'm ta because I'm talking about if your wife understood what side of the line she fell on, that you were not, that you wouldn't have this divide in yourself. It doesn't mean you have to hate your mother. It doesn't mean you have to hate anybody on that side. It means that you have an understanding of how you look at the world and how you're going to do for your people. How do you determine who your people is? It's recognize that you are what your father. Is. Oh, wait, wait, watch this. Let me ask you a question. Hold on, let me ask you a question. Did Michael take your last name? No. You, did you take Michael's last name? No. You guys didn't do that? No. Now, here's the thing. You guys, are breaking, you guys are breaking tradition, but you understand globally that that happens. And do you understand that, that there's an origin that comes from somewhere? It's not something that's just made up. It comes from somewhere because people understood how life was determined and what side of the line and what nation you were a part of. But you, 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 Michael, I just you, told you that I wasn't going to talk to you anymore, so I, I ask that you respect the conversation me and your wife is having. Okay. Thank you. Bring it out. So, what it says was, they have consulted against our hidden ones, the people that we should protect. They teach our women plenty of things, and, uh, and, and even with the things that they teach our women, they disregard their, their, their own. They disregard their children because of the self-hatred that we have. Remember, they've consulted against us, they, they have a tumult, and they are uh, taking crafty counsel against us. Let's see one of the things that they did. Read. It says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. He says, oh, you always want to bring up nation because understanding what nation we are part of is one of the biggest things in the world. Even, even the scientists will tell you, identity is one of the fundamental human necessities. Without identity, you are at a disadvantage in life. So, how do we identify ourselves? And now you, we know the world and the way it's going is identity is fluid. I could be with some one thing today, I could be another thing tomorrow. Uh, Monday, I could be something completely different and they can all conflict and I gotta respect it. That's chaotic. We need right. harmony and we need discipline, right? How do we determine what nation we are part of? We don't, we don't know that because what? They, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That was a council, that was a craftiness that they took with us, read. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And the, the objective was cutting them off as a nation to take the name of Israel from our remembrance. Me and you agree, most Puerto Ricans have never even heard that they're Israelites. Most Puerto Ricans will deny when told that they're Israelites. How are they Israelites? Say it again. How, how are the Native Americans? Uh, uh, Mike, Michael, 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 you keep interfering when I just said, can you respect the conversation that me and your wife is having? If you, say, if you say you can't respect it, then I can respect that and then we just won't. But again, your wife says she wants to hear and want to listen. You keep interfering with that. Do you understand, Michael? I'm interjecting the question. I don't need you to interject. I need you to just listen. I understand you asking me how are they Israelites and I'm saying we can go into the Bible but that's not something for you. I'm having a conversation watch to show her the issues that we're dealing with. This is kind of like an internal national issue. So she wants to share this with you when you guys get home and get in the car. That's fair. But right now we're kind of dealing, we're kind of having a family conversation right now. Michael. Okay, so, so no, no, no. I said I would. I said I would like for you to. If you're going to tell me that I can't talk to your wife, I'll respect that. No problem. Just interjecting a question. No, tell me that I can't talk to your wife, but I'll respect it. No, I all right then. So why are you bring it up? Come on, Michael. Man, you're being really, you're being really undecorous right now. Come on, you're not being decorous. Show some decorum, Michael. Show some decorum. No, listen, you brought your back like a barbaric kilt right now. Listen, just just show some just show some discipline, all right, and, and bridle your tongue. Bring it out. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one council. One what? With one consent. Go ahead. So like with one consent, a consent. They are confederate against me. So the whole idea was cut them off from being a nation, take the name away from them, and that they are totally contrary and confederate against us. Understanding that, it says this is our enemies. The people that took us into slavery on ships, 
we were sold to, the Bible says that's our enemies. The people that took our identity away, the Bible says that's our enemies. So if we understood who we were, why would we then go and join up with our enemies to go and build a life with them and have kids with them? So that our kids can then turn around and have the same issues and the same dilemmas that you had we're trying to figure out what side of the line. Now, I understand these things probably weren't even a thing in your mind when you found Michael and fell in love with him to marry him. You just wanted love. You just wanted something that was healthy. You wanted something that was contrary to the chaos that you grew up in. And I'm sure you guys have found that. But in all actuality, you created more chaos because it creates more confusion. That's right. People don't have to agree, but let's deal with the reality of it. You said you literally dealt with that. Regardless, regardless if, your mother's, uh, if your mother's side of the family cut her off or not, you still went through the world recognizing, damn, I'm a descendant of slaves. And now my dad is with my mother. That side of the family could have loved you. You would have still came to the same reality like, man, I'm torn between what do I do? Am I an activist for my people? Do I seek justice for my people? Which means that I might have to then, something might have to happen to my white side of the family in order for justice to happen? Remember, this is the conversation that we gotta have. And if we keep saying we don't know, we don't care, we'll never come to a solution. Go back to that in Isaiah 1. Go on. Bring it out. And I'm going to tell you this. Now I'm going to address Michael. Real quick, briefly. Michael, if this stuff is bothering you, I don't, hold on, I don't want you to gaslight my reality. I don't want you to gaslight my reality. How else did I do that? Because, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. The term gaslighting is, hold on, hold on. I, I, you're about to jump in and try to define it for me as if I don't know, Michael. I'm, I'm a pretty erudite man. I understand these things. The point, hold on, the point that I'm making is, is gaslighting is making someone feel crazy or delusional for the reality that they witness and that they can see. And every time I present something as to the experience that I had in the way that I feel like it's best, to get out of it and to rectify it, Michael keeps saying, no, 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 no. And I, and I respected that. All I said was, well, what do, you, what do you have in return? We got to negotiate. He said, I don't know. So, so what Michael is doing is, if I'm sitting in a chair, which is my stability, Michael is ripping that chair from up under me, but he's not replacing it with anything. So he's, he's proverbially letting me fall on my ass. Michael, you have said you respect me, but you have not shown me respect. That's right. Your actions speak louder than your words, That's Michael. That's right. Come on. No. Mikhail, stop. That the point that I make. You're gaslighting me now, brother. Because I called you Mikhail and it's gaslighting? Come on, man. I'm saying, I'm saying, wait, 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 Michael. I have That's my reality that you have not shown me. I will have, hey, before everybody here, Michael has told me he's respecting me. I give you that. You have not shown it, Michael. And hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. Watch this, real quick, for you. If Michael tells you over and over again, I love you, baby. Oh my God, I just love you so much. But hold on. But if, if you, and what you've witnessed, not what Michael wants to say it is, you still say, Michael, I don't feel it. I don't feel like you've shown me. Are you now invalidated because he said you, he does love you? Thank you. It means what? He has to adjust his approach so that you feel the very love he says he has for you. Is that fair? Thank you. So all I'm saying is, so all I'm, that's not semantics, Michael. I'm giving you an example of how you feel within your own relationship, and I've been doing this since you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I made an educated guess and your wife agreed with me. So all I'm saying is, all I'm, Michael, all I'm saying is, is that you have to adjust your uh, uh, um, demonstration of respect so that I can receive it. If the way that you've been behaving, been, been behaving towards me, you call it respect, that's not the way that I feel respect. I never said that I was going to respect you. You've been the one perfecting that you are respecting me. I never said I was going to. That's not. That doesn't mean I'm not going to. But you can't hold me accountable to something that you said. That is gaslighting. Like, hey. You're trying to superimpose your views and your ideas onto me. And, and what you eat don't make me shit. The point that I'm making is that we don't know who we are, we don't consider who we are, 
We don't know who our God is. We don't consider who our God is. And if we did, then we would utilize that to make the decisions in our lives so that's going to better our nation, not the world. We will, we'll worry about the world when we get our issues together. If, you, if your children are hungry, if your children are starving, are you going to skip over them feeding them to come feed me because I said I'm hungry? No, you're going to handle your children first, and then if you have the ability, then you can help me. So what me and you need to do is handle our own issues. That's why so Michael, we're having a family conversation right now. If you want to share with Michael, that's free, free for you to do. But we got to handle our own thing first because it takes a level of respect for us to be able to come to the table in the midst of all other nations to be able to have a point. We're not respected. We're looked at the bottom of society. We're looked at as the people that was conquered, that was that was hated, that was that was then taken over, uh, and our name was taken away from us. And they do the same thing now. Now again, we say, well, Michael's not that. Well, I want to see where I can separate Michael. I'm not going to take your word for it, Michael. I want to see where I can separate you. And yes, I have not known Michael 32 years like 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 you have. But I'm telling you this: if Michael represented himself uh, right like he did right now when he first met you, I hope you would have never married him. So, so the good, so the good that you say Michael has, I'm waiting to see it. I see this. Tell me something good about Michael. You know why? Because because uh, I would say physically and even spiritually, mentally, you're not of his nation. That's why even though even though people want to people want to say that you're half, if, if if you're half, how can you understand one half but then don't understand the other? Because the reality is is that you ju you're just not that other half. Although bi your biological makeup consists of that, so it's going to affect the way that you look, your phenotype. But mentally and spiritually, you are what your father is, which is an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. Yes. Right, different. Shout out to the Bronx. Shout out to the Bronx. Let me ask you something. You guys have known each other for 32 years. How long have you guys been married? All right, almost 30 years. And obviously you were dealing with what you're expressing to me long before Michael even came around, right? But, the, but then when Michael came around, he was so supportive. He was so understanding, and that brought you comfort, correct? Let's say, let's let, let, let let's say when you met Michael, right? Four to five years later, you married Michael. Let's say in terms of your walk and your journey of healing and your journey of, of, of you know, uh, restoration, right? Your journey of expelling and exhausting this hatred. The very thing that Michael understood. Let's say that on this journey, when you marry Michael, let's say you were at a zero, right? In terms of navigating and maneuvering away from it, getting out of it. Let's say you're at a zero. How, what? From, from zero to 10, 10 meaning I'm completely healed. I'm completely removed from that. I am totally new. You start at, at zero when you married Michael. What number are you at now from zero to 10? Zero meaning I have not started. I'm just dealing with this. It's overwhelming. I can't even fathom this. It's, it's totally destroying me. That's zero. 10 is I'm completely away from it. I am 
totally done with it. I'm removed. What number are you at right now between zero to ten? I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't, I, I didn't ask that question. I just said from zero to ten because you gotta let's let's, let's handle one so that we can move to the next. Go ahead. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, what's your name? Finn. I'm Taz. Right? Let's snap, right? Keep it respectful. Finn, uh, Finn and Taz. I totally understand what you're saying, but I want you to understand, Finn, Finn you're not alone. God, you're not alone. I'm in the same boat as you. Literally. <laughs> we are on the same boat. He could never understand that. That's right. I don't, I don't try to. I try. Hold on. You say he can empathize. I was hoping. Now, 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 I gave you that respect when you came up. That a human being such as yourself could empathize with the things that we're talking about, right? To put yourself. You can put yourself. You didn't go through it, but you could put yourself in my shoes to understand. Yes, So I'm, I'm asking Michael. Put yourself in my shoes. What would it take to fix the situation? Well. I With have empathy, to... Michael. Well, right to... back to square one. Yeah, you're right. Wow, you thought of how old are you? Feel my man here. How about say you don't, don't tell me thirty? That makes a lot of stereotypes come with stuff like that. Fifty-four. So. I'm not going to say your whole life, but let's say from 20 to 54. Before that, you, you thought about this before? So for about 46 years, for about 46 years. So for 46 years, you've been thinking about it, Michael, and you come up with nothing? Right. So give me what you came up with. I didn't say you did. I'm just saying. If, if, hold on. If, hold on. Hold on. What I'm saying is that you do not have, to, Michael, you do not have the answer to the whole world. But if I ask you a question, what do you think is a solution? Your, hold on. Your answer is not, I don't know. It's, I choose not to answer it. No, no, no. I didn't say that you did. Michael, I didn't say you did say it. I'm talking about the answer you gave me. You said, I don't know. So if you've been thinking, so if you've been thinking about this since the damn third grade, Michael, how do you come up with nothing? You say, no, it's not that I came up with nothing. I just don't have the answer to the whole world. I'm saying that should have been your answer because it would have been honest. To tell me you don't know, Michael, is a lie. No, I didn't just say I don't know. I said that earlier. Was that the truth? Was that the truth that you don't know? Was that the truth? Hold up, hold up, hold on. You don't believe in them. You don't believe in them, so don't use them. We're not talking about God. I believe in God, but I am saying. Oh, you know what that means? You believe in yourself. Because now you get to make God be what? No, no, no. In that regard, I did. But again, it's, it's, have you ever heard the term, it goes without saying? You didn't have to literally say that. You said, I believe in the God of my own understanding, meaning I get to make my God be what I want him to be. Is your God objective? Is your God objective? Hold on. Is your God objective? No? Where do you get your concept of God? Where, where can I learn about your God? Can you? I, I want to I learn more about Michael's God. Tell me, where can I do that? Do I got a blue sky view and he can't do? Then I jump into your head? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am asking you, what is your God? Can you tell me what your God is? Oh, I don't know. You don't know? What I'm asking Michael is, is this. He says, God, I'm saying, wait, you said you earlier you, didn't, you were struggling with believing in God. He says, I believe in God the way that I would like to interpret it. So I said, okay, what God is this and how can I learn about him? Because you can learn about my God simply from reading the text. This is the God I believe in. Michael, you don't have to. Michael, you don't have to believe in this. Huh? You said, what? It's edited by man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was written by man. 
If it's written by man, it was edited by man, we agree. What point are you making by that? What version is it? That's the King James Version. What point are you making? Edited. Okay, so that's the original version. But do you know that the original version exists and that we can read it? Check it out on home. You're I, 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 hold on. Do you speak Hebrew? No, sir. I so the original version were written in Hebrew. Why would I read Hebrew to you? Do you don't even speak it? That's right. From before that, the Hebrew took it from who? And and, and and the people that were before them, what language did they speak? No, you're you're not making a point, Michael. You're just saying a lot of stuff as if I don't know. You tried to tell me I wasn't a scientist earlier. Do you know what the word science even means, Michael? The word science goes back to a Latin word scientia, which means to know. Standing before your face right now, drop a sweet, sweet science on you, Michael, and you're not trying to receive it. You bring it on to try to discredit the text. All I said was you can read about my God here. You don't have to. All I'm asking you is, I'm letting you know, you can read about my God here. How do I learn about your God? We have to sit and talk and have an actual conversation where you don't have a microphone. You cut me off every half sentence and we can talk man to man and come up with what I feel, what I've learned through my life, what I've come to understand, what I've come to understand, what I've come to know. And have a conversation on a man with a microphone and a man being the You don't like I had his microphone, huh? That bothers you, doesn't it? It bothers me that this is not a conversation from a man to a man. Let me, can, can, I, can I tell you something? You don't have to sit down with me one on one to learn about my God. I don't have to be present at all. My God, my God, and the understanding of Him and the records of my God has been around for millennia, long before I was even thought of. Long before I was a little tadpole swimming around in my father's gym. Long before my God and the understanding was there. So you don't need to sit down with me. Hold on. You don't need to sit down with me one on one to learn about my God. I'm asking you, where can I learn about yours? Are you telling me the only way I can learn about yours is sit down with you one on one? Which means your God only exists in your head, which means you get to make it what you want. Want to be and what you like based off of what you experience in your 54 years of living. It doesn't matter. You can still read about my God and what he did and his plan in this book. How do I learn about yours? Even if I believe, say, I grew up Catholic, man. I grew up on this. I don't ask you what you grew up on. I'm asking you the God you say you believe in. How do I learn about him? Let's say I believe in the God of the Bible. No, I, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk hypothetical. I want to talk literal. You just said you believe in a God in a way you interpret it. How do I learn about your God? How do I learn about yours? So, so the only way I can learn about your God is, is to be able to give you an opportunity to tell me what's in your head. Which means your God exists only in your head. Right. You're just too. Wait, 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 wait. Michael, Michael. Ben, Ben, I know. Watch this. Michael, how does my God only exist in my head, but everybody out here standing next to me, we all believe in the same God? Michael, I'm going to tell you this, man. I'm going to tell you this. You have to humble down, man. I understand. Listen, I understand your ambition. Watch this. I understand your ambition. I understand your motive and what you would like to be. But you have to be honest with yourself and have hold on and you have to humble down because in, listen, your words don't match your behavior, Michael. Huh? You're no more humble than I am. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't humble myself to Michael. I don't humble myself to you. Wait, wait, wait. That's fine. So stop trying to convince me that you do. You're telling me to be humble. I'm not telling I'm telling you you gotta be humble to yourself to recognize that. Information that someone gives you that is accurate and that is correct. That's wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Facts is facts. That, 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 that's not subjective. I mean, that's not. Yeah, it's not subjective. I can interpret that same thing. No, 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 no. That's not. That's, that's not what I'm talking about, Michael. I'm talking about when me and you have a conversation and I'm sharing facts with you and I'm pointing something out. You're automatically just saying no, but then you turn around and say you respect me. Then you turn around and say, but then you say I don't. I don't humble myself down to you. Okay, well, how can you respect me if you don't humble yourself to me? You see how you keep getting yourself caught up in words? Wait, 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 wait. Am I speaking facts, Michael, or do you, or you think that I'm just that good? Can I keep catching you? No, you're not speaking facts. Say you. Say you. Say you. But there's only one good, and that's a father. Finn. And I want to thank you too, Finn. Listen, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. That's right. Listen, listen. And we have to come back into the law, statutes, and commandments that God has given us. Okay? And once we do that, at that point, it's where we're going to find our liberation our freedom and we're gonna have all the righteousness and love for one another that we've been seeking for for a very very long time and and, and, and uh unfortunately michael's not going to be a part of that That's That's right. Right. It's, it's 
process. Listen, and unfortunately, our righteousness, our liberation is going to come as the consequence and the judgment of Michael and his people. You want to know why? Because the way in which they have a, the way in which they've established their dominion and their way of living is by brute force and violence. And the same thing is going to happen, and that's how you establish respect in the earth. I'm not talking about on a small, on a small note. I'm calling for violence, Michael. And again, and again, and again. Hold on. People can sit up here and criticize me calling for violence, but we tried to do it the non-violent way for a long time, man. We cannot like we haven't checked that box off the list. We tried it, Michael. We tried it. It's the only way. It's the only way. Bring your peace up. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 6. Uh -huh. And the Lord thy God will circumcise their heart. And the Lord thy God will circumcise our heart. It's going to cleanse all of the filth that our people has in their mind. Read. And the heart of thy seed. In the heart of thy seed. Go ahead. To love the Lord thy God. To love the Lord thy God. Go ahead. With all thy heart. With all thy heart. With all thy soul. With all thy soul. With all thy soul. That thou mayest live. That we may live. Because we've been dying before too long, trying to do it Michael and his people's way. Verse 7. Go so ahead. And the Lord thy God. And the Lord our God. Read. Yeah, do it. All these curses. Look what the curses that we've been suffering, that we've been going through, that is degraded us and put us at the bottom of the totem pole, that has exalted Michael to the top of the totem pole. These are the things that we've been suffering, those curses. Read. All these curses of God, thy enemies. It shall be upon our enemies. And who are our enemies? The people that took the, the, the nation of Israel away from our remembrance, the people that have consulted against us, the people that we were sold into on slavery, that we were brought into, into captivity on ships. Right? Give me Isaiah the 14th chapter, read from the top, man. We're gonna read verse 3 so I can wrap this thing up here. Bring it out. It's the first of Isaiah chapter 14 from the top. Read it out. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob. It said the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And that's what we've been out here waiting on. See how we got to calm this thing down here, right? We're going to do it like the pastor through at church, right? He done got all sweaty. He done got all amped up. We're going to bring this thing down right here. Calm it down. This is what we've been waiting on. We've been waiting on the mercy of God. We've been absent of the mercy of God. Why? Because we have not come back into the obedience of law, church, and the commandments of God, which is what the brother just read. We have to circumcise our heart through the spirit and power of God. The Most High, Yahweh is his name, and we do so in the name of Hashem, for the Lord eagerly calls Christ, for the name of Right. So the Lord's going to have mercy on Jacob, read. And will yet choose Israel. And the Lord will always choose Israel. You know who Israel is? You black Hispanics and Native Indians, the greatest people in the entire planet Earth. Read. And set them in their own land. And we're going to get our own land back. We're not going to have to operate under someone else's rules, right? We're going, get, we're going to get the land back that they're fighting over right now. That's why there's no peace over there because the rightful owners is not there. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. These strangers, Michael is going to join us. They're going to be there. But how? Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Real quick, I, I need you to I need you to put a little spirit behind it if you're reading this verse, man. This is power. Let's talk about the liberation of black, Hispanic, and Native Indian people, man. I see it. Yes. Like huh? And they shall what? And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And they, all these other nations outside of you, black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, are gonna cleave unto us the way that we've been cleaving unto them. Read. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And these strangers, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna assist with bringing us back to the land. Oh. All of the different ways that they drove us out of the land, all of the different ways that they took away away from us, they're going to contribute to us going back to the land. Oh. Hey, 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 give them piggyback rides. Oh. They're going to give us that piggyback ride back to the land, man. Oh. Read. And the house of Israel shall possess them. In the house of Israel, you black, Hispanic, and Native Indians shall possess these people. Read. For what? In the land of the war. In our own land. For what? For servants. For servants and what? And handmaids. And handmaids. All right? Go ahead. And they shall take them captives. Everybody, they shall what? They shall take them captives. We're going to take these people captives. Who's what? Who's Who's captives? Captives they were. Whose captives we were. And that's justice in the earth if people did not understand and know that. Real quick, go ahead, go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And the people that have been oppressing us, I don't think that that's a secret. We're going to rule over them. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. The Lord has declared this. Read. In the day that the Lord shall give the rest. And at that point, we're going to get rest. From what? What are we going to get rest from? Read. From thy sorrow. From thy sorrows. The same thing that the we did to 
and try to avoid the inevitable, which is to reap judgment on the people that rape, robbed, and murdered us. The so-called white man, read. And from the sorry, and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve, and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. That's what's coming to our people. It's time for us to get up out of this place, wake up from the sleep and the delusion that we've been in, come back into our identity and nationality, which is the children of Israel, for the black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, and so that we can restore ourselves back to the, the pedestal and on the entire planet Earth to be on top, man. And with that, we give all honor, glory, and praise to the Most High God of Yahweh Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son of my Shaq and we say, Call that for all his sons and his daughters, won't feel the city get the faces. Iniquities of they father, bloodthirsty is of our nation. Not for living water, waiting to put that work in. Hamashiach gives that out, prepare the slaughter. For all his sons and his daughters, won't feel the city with the faces. Iniquities of they father, bloodthirsty is of our nation. Not for living water, waiting to put this work in. Hamashiach gives that out.